Welcome to Buckets, brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sports books. My name is Matt Moore. I'm the senior NBA writer for the Action Network. This is not a best best episode for Monday, April 8th in the association, because two groups of children are getting together to miss jumpers <laughs> on Monday, and the NBA is too scared to put games up against them. So instead, we're going to talk about the, the entire playoff picture with the future Jays. I got Joe Delera, Jim Turvey here with me. We're going to break it down in detail. Sunday was a massive day in the association. If you were doing things that most normal human beings do on Sunday, you might have missed it. We're going to catch you up on everything that you need to know about permutations, tiebreakers, scenarios, betting value, all of that on today's show. We're doing like a deep dive here conversation on how to bet the NBA playoffs right now with a week to go before the end of the regular season and the start of the play-in tournament. We'll hit on, we have a lot of conversations on the exactas about X team to beat Y, about finals matchups, those permutations. We're going to talk about uh, if the Sixers, where they land, how do we bet them? We're going to talk about the Lakers in the same way. If the Nuggets don't get the one seed, what does that look like? We'll talk about that, plus buy low opportunities in both the Eastern Conference and Western Conference, all that and more on today's show. As a reminder, I want to let you know about Buckets Live. Mondays and Thursdays at 11 Eastern, we're getting more and more folks in on Mondays and Thursdays. Not only will we break down whatever the night's big action was, tomorrow night we'll just hit the futures and talk about best bets, but we will um, talk about your best bets. So if you've got a bet that you want us to talk about, the panelists that we've got on the show, all you got to do is come over to Buckets Live on youtube.com slash the action network. I promote it all day on Twitter. Come join the live show. Put it in the chat comments. I'm reading them always, and we'll get to your best bets on the show. As a reminder, everything we talk about can be found in the award-winning Action Network app. We just added in the app uh, our new additions to our player props tool. So you're going to be able to see historical information on where these props have been, what the, uh, what the rate of win is on these props. It's really awesome. Go check it out. Open the app. Just go to the prop segment. So much cool stuff to get into. Lots of great stuff in the playoffs. Make sure to do that. And as always, make sure to go to youtube.com slash the Action Network rate review and subscribe. Let's get to it. No best bets for Monday. This annoys me every year. The NBA just is just like, I don't, it's one of two things. It's either like, oh no, everyone's going to watch the College National Championship, which is just like, guys, you got to stop hiding from everyone. Or it's like, oh no, we want to be magnanimous. Like, we, we we celebrate basketball, so we're making space for the college game. Do any of the other sports make room for you, NBA? Do do any of the – because the NFL is taking your, your your Christmas games. That's that's no longer yours. Like, is college football like, oh, no, we got to make room? No, they don't – no. Stop conceding ground to everybody. It's very annoying. Uh, but that's fine. Hey, no big deal. We'll just have guys play on a back-to-back or four and five in the last week of the season with, I think, literally now, yeah, now that I think about it, literally, literally, there are 15 out of 16 playoff spots still yet to be determined in the last week of the season. 15 out of 16. No big deal. Um, all right, let's get into this. Let's start here. So I started talking about this uh, a few weeks ago with Jim and Joe, and we talked about the finals matchup equation and it goes i'm going to talk for just a second here and i want to get you guys' thoughts because i want to i think we need to start big picture here at the, at the top and, and i want to get to joe in particular on this so the assumption from everybody is what's called like the collision course concept which is boston's the best team in the eastern conference by a mile denver is the defending champion and the team that everyone looks at and goes like, yeah, they're definitely making the finals again. They're, like, they're going to win again. Like everyone I think is most scared of Denver. Boston's the best team. Everyone's most scared of Denver. And there's this idea that they're on a, you know, hashtag collision course for the finals. I have a lot of thoughts on that um, in terms of historical precedent and various types of things, but I want to get our general sense on whether we think that that's likely or not. The Nuggets can finish first, second, or third. Uh, they are currently first in the Western Conference because of tiebreaker. Uh, we are recording this with the Wolves and Lakers still playing. If the Wolves lose, no matter what, the Nuggets control their destiny. No matter what happens, because they play Minnesota on Wednesday. So they control their destiny, but also if the Wolves win tonight, they will also control their destiny 
as well. Um, and actually, even if they lose tonight, they'll control their destiny because they'd be one behind the Nuggets. And if they beat the Nuggets, they can then catch them and make sure that they tie and they get tiebreaker. Um, but Denver will finish one, two, or three. Boston, obviously, is number one with a bullet. Um, let's start here. Let's do Jim first. Jim, do you think the Nuggets and Celtics are on a collision course for the finals? I, I, if you, if this was, if this wasn't a betting podcast, if this was a, an NBA conversation podcast, I would say those are the two teams most likely to meet in the finals. Absolutely. However, this is a betting podcast and the market as a whole believes those are the two teams most likely to meet in the finals. So I think it's a little bit more interesting to say who is, who, what matchup or what team, if you like, if you prefer to bet it individually is, you know, off of market. I, I do think that Denver and Boston are the two most likely teams. I think that the market has that baked in correct. If I were filling out a bracket with, you know, that doesn't give you points for upsets or anything, I'm putting Denver in the finals. I'm putting Boston in the finals. I have my questions about Boston and late game, you know, uh, abilities to, to finish off games. And I have my questions about Jamal Murray being fully healthy and what that yeah. means if he's not. But I do think these are the two best teams for sure. So what's, what's interesting about that is you're absolutely right. They're, they're the most likely to meet in the finals. But the reason that we think that is because they're the most likely teams to win their conference. And what I mean by that, what I mean by that is... <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what I, here's what I mean by that. It's a parlay. Like, this is why I think there's value for us to talk about it in this way, is that we we kind of just take it as like, oh, those two teams are just going to win and they're going to be there. And the question is like, no, like everything has to go right for the Celtics and everything has to go right for the Nuggets. Not everything. Like they can have, they can overcome challenges and have a tough path and, you know, get there. But the question is whether both events are going to happen simultaneously. Joe? You brought a bet that I would like you to talk about for this show through this prism. <clears throat> talk about it. So I think it's interesting, right? Right now you can bet. I know you love your exactas. And I think it's interesting looking at, you know, MGM's odds for Denver to beat Boston and Boston to beat Denver. Uh, when we look at what they're pricing this at, they have Boston over Denver at plus 550, but then they have Denver over Boston at plus 500. Um, you know, depending on the book, you know, like there's some other numbers. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I want to stop right there and go over that one more time. Boston to beat Denver is a longer price than Denver to beat Boston, despite a substantial difference in their conference and title odds. Yeah. That's, it, we got to like really reiterate that, that this doesn't make any sense. Like this is a number that doesn't make sense if you, if you were just doing the, the, the basic math. Exactly. This is the book basically being like, I am not going to give you a longer number because I know how much you're going to want to bet Denver over Boston. Exactly. Because because I, I think the thing is right now, like Boston is favored to a degree. They should number one. We know for they're going to have if they make it to the finals, they have home court advantage, which should make them favored just based on that pretty much over any team coming out of the Western conference on like paper. Right. Um, then when you couple that with the fact that the road through the Eastern conference is in theory and on paper, a lot easier than any path through the Western Conference. Boston's title odds right now should be that they're the favorite or they should be shorter than everybody else. But I think what this number kind of is telling me is that like if this was a 16 team tournament where the seating was different, um, you know, and it's like the seating was just, you know, Boston's still the overall number one seed, but, you know, all the conferences are kind of meshed in together. It does kind of, it, it seems to imply anyway that. Boston would not necessarily be favored in the finals over every Western conference team. Um, like if everything was kind of equal, I still think this number for Denver over Boston seems wrong just based on the fact that Boston should have home court. So I, like if, if that's really what the circumstance is, Boston has home court and, you know, in a seven game series against Denver, Boston should still be probably like a short favorite, I would think, uh, just based on that. But it does seem to imply that there is, you know, even though right now the number is saying that Boston is favored to win the finals, I think a lot of it might have to do with path as opposed to the individual matchups that Boston could potentially be in. Which is really, that's really interesting, especially, I go back and forth, everyone's very, like, I don't know. I think part of the thing here is I'm trying not to be contrarian for contrarian's sake. 
I think it's easy when we do the betting stuff to be like because it's the whole thing is you're gonna find bet. I always say this a lot. You're never gonna you're not gonna get to buy low on a team playing awesome. Yeah. That's not how this works. They're never gonna be like, hey, here's a great price on a team that's really good. That's that's feels terrific. Um, but I have a little bit of. I think resistance when everyone starts to agree on any one concept. Uh, we were talking about this on our Slack tonight because tomorrow night on Buckets Live, you're going to get to hear me and Andrew O'Connor Watts go 10 rounds over the Dallas Mavericks, who are like just the trendiest, trendy team in existence. Everybody is like, like I am actively making fun of it to everyone in, in my basketball life because everyone's, whenever somebody, like Rob Mahoney was in town the other day uh, for the Nuggets doing a feature on them from the Ringer. And he was like, who do you like in the West? And I was like, you know, I was like, I, obviously Denver, and I was like, I actually think well, Minnesota is a little underrated. I am still kind of there on the Clippers, and I was like, you know what everyone's going to say? Everyone's going to say, you know who my sneaky pick is? No one is talking about this team, but it's the Dallas Mavericks. And, like, everyone's going to say it at the exact same fucking time because everyone's just like, Luca with a team that seems like it has a pulse. Let's go. Um, and they've been top ten in both offense and defense since All-Star. And there's all these reasons kind of for it. So anyway, tomorrow you can hear me, Andrew O'Connor, Watts talk that out. What's interesting about this, Joe, I think is um, – so I, I was thinking about this the other day. I was listening to You Better You Bet with Lockie Lockerson, uh, Ken Barkley, who used to work here at Action. And Ken was talking – it's a great, great radio show with Nick Costas for, for betters. And one of the things they were talking about, he was like, you yeah, know, the NBA is usually predictive. And I was kind of thinking about that because, okay, let's go back 10 years. And let's go to 2014. Um. Heat go back to the finals. Sure, that's predictable. Spurs actually, like, you could argue the Thunder were as good as the Thunder, the Spurs that season. Um, like, you could make an argument for the Thunder that year. But, okay, Thunder, Spurs. Then we have Cavs, Warriors in 15, 16, 17, and 18. And what you really have to break down there is we had this, this cosmic occurrence of LeBron, who made the finals eight straight fucking years. And then the other one, we had a super team in the Golden State Warriors and they existed simultaneously in separate conferences. So we did have this overlap year of like 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Sure. But what about 19? Like Toronto was not the consensus best team in the Eastern Conference. It was Milwaukee. That was why their upset was so big with yeah. the villain Fred Van Vliet. Um, in 2020, the Lakers were absolutely considered to be the best team in the league that season. It got a little weird, if you may recall, with how that season ended. But also... The Miami Heat got there. Definitely not the best team in the East. 2021. The Bucks actually struggled a lot of the year and looked pretty like mediocre because they were trying to figure out Drew Holiday. And then they met the Phoenix Suns, who again, not the best team in the conference. That was the Jazz. 2022, we get Warriors versus Celtics. Boston turned into a super team like in January, they were 500 and the, and the, everything was was collapsing and they closed that year. Everyone thought it was going to be Milwaukee again. And in the West, it was going to be Phoenix. Phoenix was the best team by a mile in 2022, 2023. OK, we get Denver, who I think, you know, we we liked. But again, Phoenix was the favorite last year. OK, Denver was was, was I think, the best bet. And we talked about it, but Phoenix was the favorite to win that conference. Um, and in the Eastern Conference, no one had Miami. They were a play-in team. Mm -hmm. My point here is that if we take these years, and even if we go back to 2010 to 2014, we do not historically see this matchup of this is definitely the collision course working out. Think about like going back to even if you want to do it on a superstar level, and you're like, well, the superstars meet. Kobe and LeBron never met in the finals. Not once. You know how crazy that is? Kobe and LeBron, who's who's – Primes overlapped, never met in the finals. Um, I want to go on this little rant, Joe, to talk about like how difficult I think it is for sports not to defy us, for sports not to surprise us. Um, I actually want to get Jim's thoughts on that. Like This is a lot of my thought process in betting these other <laughs> outcomes with the possibility of betting a favorite on series, win line, or whatever. But to, but to Joe's point, if you bet the five, if you want shorter numbers, you can bet the 550 now because anyone who faces Denver or Boston in a conference finals is going to be a significant underdog that you can get a plus number with if you take that plus 550. 
Well, and it's always why I'm a little bit, I know you love the exacts. I'm a little bit more hesitant because it is, you. they aren't correlated things. Like a Denver sure. success in the West has nothing to do with Dem- Boston success in the East, yeah. right? So it's, you're, you're increasing the hold potentially at, at no real gain unless, and I know you do this often, and I think it's the way that I like to approach this too, unless you're using it as a portfolio piece, which is why my favorite coming into this the, the bet that I really love because it's been so hard to get down on Boston all year. Like, you know, like I just don't have any positions on Boston and they're a team that, you know, is, is a, a, a odds on favorite to come out of the East. So how, how do I get at least a little bit of that? And if you go to our sponsor bet MGM right now, you can get Boston to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves, the potential one seed from each conference. Now we, we see Denver as the team that we think is the best team, but that's to this point of, you know, it doesn't always work out the way we think. You can get that number, Boston to beat Minnesota at plus four thousand. I think that's a crazy number. Yeah. Minnesota is yeah. a team that I'm high on in general, but I have some Minnesota leverage. If I and the other thing about this Boston Minnesota bet, the exact here, if it gets to the finals and it is Boston Minnesota, you're going to get Minnesota at a pretty solid plus number. So you can even hedge off of that. So I this number to me was kind of crazy when I saw it because this Wolves team I've been really really impressed with. They their net rating has actually gone up since Carl Anthony Towns yeah. uh, has gone out. They were plus six point six net rating before he went out. They're plus seven point four since he went out. Now I do think in a playoff situation for a team that do, can struggle late game, you know, especially offensively, Carl Anthony Towns is a guy you'd love to have. But there, it, he has not been ruled out officially for the whole time. And Nas Reed has been a pretty good proxy for him. He's averaging about four points uh, of rebound and assists less per game. But he's shooting you know forty six forty two. 80 from from the field he's such a good player he's he has made that that transition from not having carl anthony towns there a lot easier and sometimes there's something to be said for late game carl anthony towns isn't my favorite carl anthony towns to begin with nas reed is more of a player who can support someone like anthony edwards who at times you know maybe is going to be over overly aggressive in late games and that that might come back to haunt you but in the playoffs I, I, I want to skew towards a player who is aggressive late game and in those tough situations and has the mindset of absolutely no fear, which we know Anthony Andrews has absolutely no fear versus players who get a little tighter, players who are going to, you know, maybe shrink from the moment. He's, he might force a shot, but he is not going to shrink from any moment whatsoever. So Minnesota as a, as a whole, as a team I love and using them as a way to kind of give myself a little bit of Boston because I, I, they just haven't had a good number all year. It's been yeah. really hard to get in on them. I know some betters out there are fine laying, you know, minus 115 for them to come out of the East. I don't love that. I'd rather play uh, Boston to beat Minnesota, an outcome that I think is highly possible at 40 to one. Uh, I yeah. think is a, is a great number to get in on, on an exacta. The price is really good. Yeah, it, and if you do, The price is really good. If you do get there, the, the complication there obviously is like you may have to like you would be in a tough spot to maybe have to hedge two rounds depending on what you do you might just let it ride right conference finals yeah. heat, you know if it's nuggets wolves and celtics sixers or celtics bucks you just let it ride um and see where it goes that's where like having a position on the denver nuggets as joe's talked about exactly. with, like doing the bonus bets all throughout the year like i've I, I've, I've definitely added nuggets championship futures um yeah what's annoying and we'll get to this a little bit later one of my things with the Celtics is I was like, well, look, I'm not going to bet the Celtics here at this really low price given everything that can happen and how I kind of see the Eastern Conference and my concerns about their late game offense. I'll bet them series by series. And now they're probably going to have to face either the Philadelphia 76ers with Joel <laughs> Embiid or the Miami Heat in the first round. And I'm like, shit. Okay. Well, okay. Um, but we'll talk about that in a little bit later. Um, the, one of the things I think is interesting, I posed this question to Raheem and Brandon in one of our group chats, and I want to get you guys' thoughts on it. So plus 550, um, Celtics over Nuggets, I think is a great bet if you want to go that route. I do love Boston beat Minnesota 40-1. to one. Yeah. Um, I have a 23-1 to one Boston-Minnesota uh, finals matchup, so I've already, I'm, I'm at that spot. Um, but I want to ask you guys this. <laughs> so the, the Bucks, who lost again, again tonight, and this, the last time I did this was a couple of days ago. This is probably longer given how much that they are tail spinning. But Bucks to meet Nuggets was plus 970. So a little bit under 10 to 1. And then Wolves Celtics was 16 to 1. And I've kind of been thinking in my head about like, which of those do I think is more likely? Like, which one of those do I think is better value is a better way to put it. Like, which one of those I think it, do I, would I rather have money on? I haven't bet either one. 
Um, I have a little bit of Wolves Celtics, but I, I just think that that's really interesting to look at the idea of is Denver that big of a, of an edge in the West at plus nine seventy with this Bucks team, and then you got the Wolves who are definitely playing better than Milwaukee, Minnesota, Milwaukee right now. Gonna have a better record. Gonna have a better probably like very good chance they have a better seed. And yet the, di- the 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 differential in those numbers, Joe. Like that's a thing I've been kind of thinking about is just like the perception of Bucks Nuggets plus nine seventy versus the perception of a Wolves Celtics. I, one of the things that I think this kind of I keep coming around to, and it builds off of Jim's point with everything he said about Nas. Which, by the way, bad news for you on the Nas front. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns was shooting around before the game today. But uh, Joe, I, I just kind of keep coming back to this idea of. Everyone, I think, has the team in the West that they're like, this is the dark horse team that's undervalued. I want to get it on. I think it just might be the Wolves, who have been like the best team in the conference the entire year. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's because everybody listened to the season preview episode and has an 80 to 1 pick <laughs> on the Wolves. But <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's that. But uh, no, but I do think that Minnesota is legit. And getting Carl Anthony Towns back, I think, would be huge, especially for their depth, because it allows them to you know, kind of do some different things. And it also, I think the biggest thing is that like, because they have a guy like Nas, you can ramp Cat up like slowly, honestly. Like you don't have to, even in the playoffs, like the difference between him and Embiid, like the injury, obviously the timeline's a little bit different. Yeah, Embiid is critically important for Philadelphia. He has to play, like they have to get him to 40 minutes a game, minimum. Like they have to get him there. The Wolves now kind of know, it's like, hey, uh, we could play cat 30 minutes a game, like, and it'll be okay. Uh, cause we have a guy like Nas off the bench. Um, and I think that that's so, so important for Minnesota. I do think Minnesota is really good. I, my concern with them, it, it's just continued to be their offense. Um, you know, they, the numbers are interesting cause they actually haven't fallen off without towns, uh, since he got hurt. Um, at least from like an offensive perspective and even from a defensive perspective as well, they're still elite. Uh, but the offense, like when you watch them, it's like, Ooh, like, I don't know. Like uh, like the offense, it, it kind of gets like a little sticky, like the ball, like, you know, it's like if ant doesn't have it going, then they seem to struggle a little bit offensively. So maybe that's like where cat kind of helps you a little bit more than a guy like Nas. But, um, I do think Minnesota's excellent. It just to me seems like they're a little bit more matchup dependent than some of these other teams. Like uh that like and I think that's what my concern is with Minnesota and it's really my concern with almost every team in the West besides Denver. I think Denver is like the one team in the West that I'm like, "Ah, like it doesn't matter where they are in the bracket." Like I I feel pretty confident about them and everybody else is looking at where Denver is in the bracket and saying like, Ooh, we do not want to be in their part of the bracket. Um, so I think that's the thing about Denver that's different than really every other team in the Western conference. And it kind of affects the way that I'm viewing Minnesota right now, though, if Minnesota, like dunks and threes, I think has them at the, their playoff probability is number one to be the one seed, which then takes them out of the Denver part of the bracket. Cause Denver just isn't going to fall lower than three. So I do think that that, helps actually make Minnesota a much more attractive piece for your portfolio if you were looking to try to grab another team in the Western Conference. So I'm with you. I, I do like Minnesota. I think they're excellent, um, and they're obviously very well coached. So I think this is a good opportunity for them moving through the Western Conference playoffs to maybe avoid Denver until a potential you know uh, like Western Conference Finals matchup. I will gripe a little bit here as somebody that – I kept waiting for an opportunity to go in a different direction. I was like, well, the numbers will eventually tell me that Denver's best and then I'll pivot. And like the numbers just kept being like, no, you, you should probably bet Oklahoma city. Cause they're just like the best team in the conference. Like they're the best second, the second best team in the league by a lot. Like you should just keep betting them to be the one seed and to win the division and all these things. So I kept doing that and I was right. And then we got to the end and Denver clutched out enough wins to still be in the conversation and then Shea Gillis Alexander and J Dub set the East Coast road trip. And that's gonna absolutely fuck me. And that's fine. <laughs> yep. That's betting. But it is really frustrating for me to be like, but I was right. <laughs> like, like if you any objective this is what's really crazy about Denver is. Um, okay, I'm gonna look at this. 
you can use all the advanced met metrics that you want, right? Point differential or net rating or SRS or any of these other type of things. And you could be like, I don't believe in those things. I know Denver's the best team. Okay. So why does Denver have a sub 500 record versus the other Western Conference teams? Not that they should, that, that like, I I'm not saying Western Conference playoff teams, not that like they should be not the favorite. I'm not debating that. It's the confidence and certainty that is presented with Denver relative to the other teams. That's where I keep being like, yeah, no, there's a lot of data that just says that, that Denver is going to have a really hard time. Like one of my very strong predictions is somebody that covers the team day to day. They're going to trail in a playoff series. And you can, you can be sure that when they're down in a playoff series and the books have to mark them down in the futures prices, I'm going to work on the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> I will bet them across every book. Once that happens, because I love those opportunities when the book is like, I have to downgrade them, even though I know we're going to get killed. Um, it depends on who it is, right? Like they go 0-1 to the Lakers. The <laughs> no, I don't know. That's going to be a lot of money on the Lakers. That's the problem. Yeah. Because they're such a public team. Um, so let's kind of transition there because that, that takes us into our, our if-then bets. Because what, what Joe was talking about there. Um We've, we've kind of talked about the Wolves here, but I am curious about any other thoughts that you have, Jim, about if the Nuggets don't get the one seed, okay? And the way that this works out is they control their destiny because they play Minnesota in Denver on Wednesday. If Denver's on a back-to-back, -back, by the way. If Denver doesn't lose to Utah, which they're on the front end of a back-to-back, -back and heads up, I'm not expecting a lot of the Nuggets to make that flight. Hmm. Just like as a heads up, I don't think all of the Nuggets starting five make the flight to Utah. Now they can win that game because Utah is Utah and where, where they're at in the season. But just as a heads up, they're going to keep some guys back, I think, because they know they're going to beat Minnesota. I do think Michael Porter Jr. has played every game this season, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. maybe he goes. Yeah. Um, but if the Nuggets win, they knock the Wolves a game behind them. If the Wolves win, that's basically it because the Wolves can then lose a game and still clinch it because they have tiebreaker. So that's pretty big. Jim, my question for you is this. If Denver is not the one seed, they will fall. They can't fall to four. They're going to be two or three. If Denver's not the one seed, where do you think the most value is? I, I think it is. So is it in this world we're picturing Minnesota? Are we, we're saying OKC is, is not likely to chase it at this point? Or do you think their guys might come back and there is life for them for a one seed? I don't think they can catch. So the problem is OKC loses head-to-head -head with Minnesota and they lose the three-way to Minnesota. Yeah. So there's I mean, no, like, the only way that this happens is if Minnesota, like, what you'd have to have is, um, Denver beats Minnesota and Denver loses to the Spurs or Grizzlies and the Thunder win out. Okay. Lot, yeah. Right? I mean, I, so I've been focusing my attention more on these top three because I do, I mean, like, so if I go to dunks and threes, now this is before tonight in all fairness, but uh, yep. tonight may have almost made it even more chaotic. Like if I'm looking at the Suns, they can get the four seed or they can get the 10 seed. The Pelicans can get the four seed or the 10 seed. So there's so much, that is at, at stake in this final week. What's up? Did, did one of those uh, go the opposite direction now? So here's what I will tell you. Uh, the Mavericks pulling that Houston game out of their ass. That's yeah, crazy. that was a like, wild finish. In the rectum is where they found <laughs> that win. Uh, that one combined with the Clippers doing the same versus the Cavaliers behind it. An absurd Paul George fourth quarter performance. Um, that combination... We're like, uh, I forget what the, I think, no, uh, magic number for the Mavericks is two and they have two extremely easy games yeah. left on okay. the schedule. Yeah. It's like, we're gonna like, I will go ahead and tell you that it's not ink, but like the hardest pencil I can find, I am writing Clippers Mavericks. We're going to yeah. get Clippers Out, Mavericks four or five outside of Boston, who is a hundred percent, obviously for the one seed, they are the two highest in percentages for the current seeds that they're in. So Clippers 93.5% for the four Dallas, 85.1% for the five. So that's, that's pretty close. 
Uh, well, I will say this. I'll let Andrew take the the main stands. I do. I'm I'm vaguely intrigued by Dallas. I've been pretty low on them all season, but I do think if Denver slides to that two three part of the bracket, and Dallas is looking at having to beat the Clippers, and with you know with a Kawhi that we don't even fully know what's going on, and even when they have him, Dallas, you know they've split that famously rivalry series there. I'll let you, I'll let you, I, I don't need to go too, de- too deep on Dallas because it's actually a team that's a little bit below them that I think maybe has the most intriguing ceiling and is a longer did number. Say, wait, did you say they split? The, the, uh, the playoff series? Yeah, they didn't. Clippers won both times. The Mavericks have never beaten the Clippers. It feels that way because the Mavericks went up 2-0 on them and then because they were the dog, everyone's like, I'm, I'm, you shouldn't feel bad about this. I literally like heard the this Monopoly man. <laughs> I literally heard this conversation on Bill Simmons' podcast where it was like the Clippers don't want any of them after their playoff series. I'm like, dude, is this like the Mandela effect? Where <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to say with the Monopoly man. Yeah, the Mandela effect. <laughs> like the, the 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 people think that the Mavericks beat the Clippers. Mavericks are 0 2 versus the Clippers. Their one playoff run that they actually won a series in. The only playoff series that Luka Doncic has ever won are versus the Utah Jazz when he missed most of the series and Jalen Brunson, our New guy, York, Nick, go New York, go New York, <laughs> go, won that series. And then the Phoenix Suns series where he was amazing. He was sublime. He was fantastic. I'm also about 60% sure that the Suns had COVID. But mm. anyway, that's a topic for tomorrow night. That's that is, that is. And I'll leave it to Andrew because ironically, I've been on your side uh, debating Andrew at times. I just think the path is potentially intriguing. But It is softer, right? So here's a, here's a question is like, we talked about the value of the Wolves. I think if you're listening, you're like, wait, wait. So you like the value on the Wolves as being underrated, but you also want to take one of the team's that's going to be in the Wolves side of the bracket. I think that's what's, what is kind of interesting here is like, it essentially gets into, I'm probably going to like the Clippers. I haven't gotten there yet. I haven't, that's not in, in pen. I got to do the work on the series, but if it's Mavericks Wolves, I think how you feel about that series probably dictates the answer to this question of where's the value if Denver's not one. Yeah. And I, the Pelicans are the, the team to me. I know Joe wrote this in here too, so we can, we can tag team this. They are the team that intrigues me the most. They've been, they've been, all over the map. They're always all over the map, but the ceiling is still so high on this team. Uh, it's like it kind of was going viral tonight, but it's been happening for a little bit. Zion Williamson's defense looks like it maybe is like he has played himself into shape in the most literal term. Yeah. You know, they People always say that about players. Zion looks notably more fit than he has at previous times this season. CJ McCollum is putting together a really nice, consistent, quiet season, and they've been doing all right without Brandon Ingram. If they slot him back in, this is still a team that has, and it has so many, it has so much optionality too. It has Jose Alvarado, Herb Jones, who's one of, you know, he's in that Jalen Suggs world of will never win defensive player of the year, but probably should win one at some point in his career because of the havoc that he can wreak on an entire game. They're the team that I just keep coming back to. They're, they're under the they're because of these teams like the Warriors and Lakers are such bigger names. They really do kind of fly under the radar in that section of the bracket versus like a Kings who I just have no faith in making a run whatsoever. The Pelicans do provide the ceiling to me that I'm intrigued by, but the likelihood of them being in that six, seven, eight and having to go through Denver in that part of the bracket does make it a little bit scarier for me. If Denver takes a one seed, I'm actually more intrigued by Pelicans who are likely to be, you know, maybe if they land exactly eight, that's like the worst scenario for them. But otherwise, they potentially could be in that seven, six or seven, which is the more likely range for them. And I would be pretty intrigued at them at, a, you know, around like I think it's 3,500 to even come out of the West, which is a, a pretty steep number. Pelicans getting the win versus the Suns tonight huge, uh, huge. Was, pretty, was pretty relevant. Um, Suns still have tough games left on the schedule. Now they have tiebreaker over the Pelicans, which is meaningful. So the Pelicans didn't overtake them, but they are tied in the loss column. Kings are one game back. They're both two games back of the Mavericks. Lakers are three games back in the loss column. Um, Joe, let's get to your thoughts on on the Pels. So I've been trying really hard to do this where, okay, I bet MGM, the Pelicans win the Western Conference is 30 to 1, and the Mavericks to win the Western Conference is 12 to 1. And I'm like, that's a huge gap between 12 and 30. And then, like, here's the implied. The implied is 8% and 3%. And 3%. That's the gap. The gap. It's like, do you believe that the Mavericks have a five percent better chance of making of winning the Western Conference 
um, than the Maver- than the Pelicans. If you're like, no, they should be even, then sure, there's technically value on the Pelicans. Otherwise, you could probably just bet both if you think that they're even. Um, the, a lot of this also is it, is the Pelicans have to be behind because they are sitting on the six seven bubble, and have, right now they're in the seven. And this is an important thing that the play in tournament has kind of entered, which is if you are in the play in tournament and you are likely to be in the play in tournament at the time that the odds are posted, they have to consider in that price the possibility of you just not making the playoffs yeah. at all. Yeah. You don't get four games for somebody to get hurt or in the other team or things, you know, craziness to happen. That's all out. Like if Pelicans lose to the Lakers and then the Warriors, that's it or kings like that's it yeah they're done um so joe kind of what are your thoughts on the pelicans and where they sit because they are definitely the team that i think has lost the most mojo and public perception over the last yeah couple of weeks this win today i think was a, a nice bounce back spot in public perception for them yeah i think i think you're 100 percent right in terms of like getting a big win over the suns um it, it gets them to a point where they can get up to the six. And I think that that's really, really important given the play in. Um, I do think that one of the things that I always like to think about with implied probability is interesting. And you kind of brought it up there, right? Like when you're talking about uh, the 5% implied odds difference. So I think that that's important. Um, I think that it's probably close, like in terms of whether, like, you know, what their actual, like, implied probability is to win the Western Conference. Like, it's like, yeah, like, sure, like, they could both be 8%, like, whatever. Uh, I think the thing that's important a lot of times when we're betting, it's always like so, it's always so different, right? Because, like, the implied, the implied odds tell us, you know, like what the percentage is. But then at the same time, it's like when you bet on it, you have to win at different rates. So it's like you don't have to win the Dallas bet you know, like 5% more, like when you're betting it right now, it's like you have to win. They have to, they would have to win the Western conference one out of every 12 times to win your money back right now. The Pelicans would have to win one out of every 30 times to win your money back. So I always think that that's like such an interesting corollary between like the, between like the, like the circumstance. Right. So it's like, for me, like, I think, you know, I, like, I understand what the implied odds are telling us, but from me looking at these two teams, I'm like, well, like, I think I'd rather have the team that I only need to win one out of every 30 times uh, in order to get there. So, um, you know, and like, that's kind of the way that I can look at this picture. So I do like new Orleans. I think that they, like Jim said, they have so much optionality, but then at the same time, it's like, you look at it and you look at a team like Dallas and you say, okay, how many series are they going to literally have the two best players on the court? Because Luka is almost always going to be the best player on the court. There's very few matchups, very few games where Luka is not going to be the best player on the court. And then Kyrie Irving can, is without almost without question going to be one of the best twos in any series that they're in. So when you look at it that way, I like I almost compare them to last year's Suns more so than this year's Suns because I think the roster fits better around them. Um, uh, like to me, like I think I'd rather have Luka and Kyrie this year. Then I would have rather had the Suns like with Durant and Booker last year. So if I look at it and compare it that type of way, I think that then Dallas, you know, does have value. But I think at the number, I, I do like what New Orleans kind of brings at a 30 to one number, uh, you know, where I think that they can climb to maybe the six. And I do think that if they play the Kings, they should definitely be able to take care of the Kings in, you know, in a play in matchup. Let's go over to the Eastern Conference. Um, so I posed this question in the rundown of if you think the Sixers get the six seed, but I want to kind of adjust that because now with the Pacers beating the Heat tonight, they now win tiebreaker over the Sixers, the Heat, and any three-way tie of those teams. So any of those outcomes, the Pacers come out ahead. Now, Pacers' schedule is not totally brutal. Orlando's is tough depending on if you think the Bucks have a pulse or not. If you were just like, I don't, I don't know how to judge the magic because they have to play the bucks twice in the next week. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point. Um, for right now, based off of the, off of the, the probability, let's say that the Pacers get the six. We'll come back to them. If the Sixers get the seven seed, I do kind of want to make a, a broad point about this. So I, I've been on the show being like, I, before MB got back, I was like, Hey, he's practicing. You should get in on that number now. And like a lot of us at action, not a lot, some folks at action have bet that that Sixers number, right? To be like, this is really good value based off of the fact that Embiid's going to come back. And um, there was concerns about like, is Embiid like, yeah, but he's not going to be 
Like, and then it, here's the thing is like, he absolutely destroyed the heat the other night, destroyed them. And Embiid's not back. Like he's not back to where he was. It really doesn't matter. Cause he's so damn big and good and draws so much attention that he's going to be productive and impactful almost no matter what. But <laughs> the problem here is that this is where the play in tournament goes the other way. You have to be so certain to bet the Sixers right now that they're going to win that 7-8 matchup versus the Heat. Like, you have to be positive. And there is a very decent chance that they have to go on the road to Miami to do so. Now, I don't think Miami's a juggernaut. I think Miami's beatable. They've looked like it today. They've looked like it this season. But it's a one-game environment. If Heat Voodoo shows up and they sneak into that 7 spot, and now the best you can do is Celtics first round. That's not where I want to be. And so, Jim, like, this is the stop point on Sixers futures is <laughs> until we see where they wind up. If they get back in the seven, I'm back at it. But if they I, I have to make sure that they're not in the eight seed. Does that mean I'm not going to bet them versus the Celtics? Probably not. I got to think about it. It just means that I don't want future plays on them until with the heat with the Pacers winning today versus Miami, that changes, in my opinion, the value on Sixers futures at the moment. No, I agree 100%. I think the, I think people did rightfully go out and buy when the, the Embiid news came back. And I think now we we wait. The other thing about waiting now is we have to wait so much less of a time. We're, we're almost at the end of the season. Like you, There's really not a rush to get some of the stuff in when things are going to be so much more settled in a week. Now, some of it, if you can force foresee a reason right. the number is going to change vastly, uh, which if you don't mind me pivoting briefly to a different Eastern Conference team, I think is a team, if we want to press pause on Philly for a second, there, there's a team out there. You you mentioned the Orlando Magic and saying, looking at the rest of their schedule and saying, we don't really know. It, it's based on, you know, are the Bucks good or bad? But what we do know is it's kind of in the Magic's control how they end the season. And there's a decent chance that they end the season as the number two seed in the East. If this yeah. Bucks, if this Bucks slide continues, they are in perfect position to take that two seed. I mean, the Cavs are losing every other day. The Knicks have actually piled up a couple of losses. The Magic could be the two seed in the East. Now, I don't think the Magic are going to win the East. I don't even foresee them potentially getting to the the conference finals. Yeah. However, <laughs> right now they are seventy five to one to win the conference. If this is the two seed who gets two potentially two uh, two um, rounds at home, so say say this even if they don't get the two seed, say they're the three seed face off against the Pacers in the first round. I'm going to like the magic to beat the Pacers in that first round. Suddenly Woo. you're sitting on a 75 to one and they're in, you know, they're one of the four teams left in the conference. You can just play every other team that that, that ticket is paid for itself easily right there. So this Pacers team, I, or sorry, this magic team is not one that I am. I've looked at at any point in the season, but with this remaining schedule with the Pacers in the six spot and them in the, the three spot, this second, you know, this is a, a number that to me is if you're a portfolio better, put a tiny sprinkle here. And I, I really like, you know, the potential for it to pay off to as just quickly leverage it within a month. I think my thing with the magic is I don't know how you leverage it, how you hedge it appropriately, because the Celtics are going to be like minus a billion versus them. If the <laughs> but if they're the, the two or the three, they don't even they might not face them until the conference finals. Right, but then you still at the conference final spot have to hedge it. <laughs> You're like my yeah, that's true. hundred, like, <laughs> and that's the, and that see that's the thing is like with the Sixers, if the Sixers make the conference finals, uh, the the Celtics are going to be favored, no question. They're going to be heavy favorites, but they're not going to be like there will still be like a uh, this was a powerhouse. They get Embiid got hurt. They're back here. Look what they've done. I, like it, it will be an easier spot to hedge. Magic, I think, is tough. Um, and I want to circle back to them in a second. I, Joe, you look at yes. Yeah, I I do wonder though. So thinking about the six or the Sixers, right? I don't know if it matters if they're the seven or the eight. If you're betting them to win the title, right? Like obviously, the the reason that it would matter is like if you don't think that Embiid is ramped up enough for a matchup against the Celtics. But either way, the like you should assume that they have to go through Boston. So whether it's the first round or the conference finals, they have to go through Boston. So like that that's why i'm like i don't know if it matters like you know okay let me make let me make the counter argument to you 
So you, you get them versus the Celtics, right? Yeah. In the first round. And you're like, whoever wins the series is going to win the Eastern Conference. So I've got this great 40 to 1 ticket to win the title. I'm going to hedge a little bit of it versus the, the Celt with the Celtics. Yeah. When, ser you know, series win, spread line, whatever. Um, it is entirely possible then that the Sixers win that series <laughs> and kill your hedge. And then you're like, I'm scot free. And then they lose to the fucking Pacers or Magic or something because this is the Sixers. Yeah. Like, it, it's not, not like that's the scenario I want to avoid where I'm just like, oh, God, I'm really like I, I bet the Sixers at 40 to one. They beat the Boston Celtics and they're losing to the Knicks. The Knicks. Yeah, but like, well, the Knicks are pretty good. But yeah, but, but I, I do. My point of it is basically that like they have you have to assume that they have to go through Boston at some point. Yeah. Obviously, it's yeah, easier to hedge like or it's like easier mentally to hedge later. Like, you know, like if they're playing yeah. Boston in the conference finals, but like you have to assume that they're going through Boston. And I think because of what you said about, you know, because you're in the play in, it has to be priced in. I do think that you could lose a little bit of juice if they are in fact in the play in, you know what I mean? So like, I do like, we know, yeah. we kind of know that that's what the case is. I think they should win one of two games at a minimum, but I, I do think you might lose a little bit of juice by waiting when you know that they have to go through Boston, no matter what. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm not gonna talk about the Lakers. Now we were gonna talk about the Lakers, but I don't want to talk about the Lakers right now, just because they're losing the wolves. They're very likely to be in the, uh, they're either gonna be eight or nine. I think if the Pelicans fall to seven, there's a chance that the Lakers get seven. Um, the real interesting. I, I will go ahead and put this one down the. Like I'll go ahead and th toss this one out on the stoop and see what the cat thinks about this one. Uh, <laughs> Never heard that expression before. <laughs> yeah, there's the whole thing. Uh, throw this one on the stoop <laughs> and see if the cat licks it up. Um, old timey expressions. I'm an I'm an old timey expression fan. Uh, if If the Lakers are in the seven eight, and the Nuggets are locked as two, do they rest? <laughs> and, and the Lakers know, <laughs> and the Lakers know that okay, if we lose this game, we still get a home game to get the eight seed versus the Wolves or theoretically Thunder. They have to like they will try and win the game. You just can't risk it. There's all these reasons why. I do wonder if the thought will cross their minds of should shouldn't we just like not maybe play the Nuggets? I feel like if it wasn't Steph and Dre sitting in that ten seed, maybe you yeah. do that. But th I yeah. I would be terrified with one game with Steph and Draymond and and Clay coming in town. There's yeah. just so much history there that yeah I, I see where you're going. I see where you're going for sure. But that that would be scary. That would be a little scary. It's really funny that we're talking about all this and like. We're talking about, you know, we're, we're next up, we're going to talk about buy low spots. Um, the fact that we're just like, well, it's going to be the Warriors. Like, the Kings have kicked the uh, Warriors yeah. and the Lakers <laughs> ass all season. The poor Kings. Like, the Kings have done all of this work, and they're, you know. I'm they giving have. out a magic pick here, and I can't even talk myself into the Kings. That's how low no, I am on the Kings. No. The beam let's, is yeah, off. Let's, let's beam is broken. Skip, let's, skip over to, to buy, let's skip over to buy low before we get out of here. Um, so, so Jim definitely wins the, the impressive <laughs> bet of the night by taking, Hey, I'll say this. The magic have had a fair amount of success against the Celtics too. So maybe they, that series line, you could, you could have a little bit of fun on that. They've, they've played the Celtics pretty good. They have, they have, um, there's two teams I want to talk about in the Eastern conference. Uh, the first, as far as like the buy low spot. Now I don't, this is less of a. I want to buy a future. I think it's more of a, I'm looking to buy them in the playoffs at the right price in the series. The first one that I will talk about actually is like, look, okay. I went through, um, the top four, three man lineups for all the playoff teams. How many minutes did they play? Top four, three man lineups, right? How good were they? And then I took the top 20 in net rating, and I wanted to see how many teams, like how many of, of those lineups are in the top 20 for each team. Can we turn this into a quiz? The top team 
that had the most lineup combinations was the Milwaukee fucking Bucks. Really? And I like, would not have yeah. guessed that. And this is the problem. Their net rating versus the top teams, which will take a Good. hit since they had to face the Knicks tonight, a top team. They're elite. Uh, Milwaukee, the problem, I think, is that the price is still very unimpressive. Yeah. yeah. Is that, like, the books are like, you're not getting the two seed at some discount. I don't care how many games to the Raptors they lose. Like, at BetMGM right now, they're plus 310 to win the yeah. Eastern Conference. They're plus 750 to win the title, which I think is, like, a little bit interesting. Uh, that's another one where, like, I think the exacta of maybe, like, Nuggets over Bucks, and then you hedge with Bucks because, like, I would want I would want my money in on Denver. Like I would just want to bet Denver in that series. Um but like Joe, if we're gonna talk about how you know betting buying low on teams is never gonna feel comfortable. You're not buying low from a price perspective, but God almighty, are you buying low <laughs> on the Bucks right now from a public perception? I, I just wonder what's happening with the handle on them, how many betters that have positions on them or hedge it like I'm very curious because I'm captain March and April don't matter. And the bucks have been so bad. They're testing me on that. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely just seems that they are going into the playoffs, like limping Chris Middleton. Uh, I think he left the game today early with an injury too. So, you know, that's definitely concerning uh, given his injury history. I'm not really sure. I, I'm not entirely sure what exactly the injury was, but I know that he, I, I do know that he kind of came out of the game uh, at some point. I'm not sure if it's anything that's long-term, but I do think that the number for Milwaukee is fascinating because it's like you, you, they can't really move it. I don't think like either way because the, like the expectations for them are so high. They probably have such a big handle already. They don't want to add to the handle. Um, and it's and they still are the two seed, right? Or at this point in time, I think they still are the two seed right now in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> yeah, they are. So it's like you know, it's, everything's so in flux. Like I, I guess, like you just you can't really you can't move it, and you just have to it's kind of deal with the fact that the number is just never going to be really good. But they're three and seven over their last ten games, like losing four in a row to some bad teams, and then the Knicks. Like it, it's not. It's not a great scenario for Milwaukee, um, and it's kind of, but it is kind of interesting that the number hasn't moved, given you know how bad they've really looked, um, and I guess that just has to do with a relative level of faith in the the pedigree in terms of their personnel. They have four games left, and their magic number for the two seed is four. Like, yeah, they got to keep winning. Like they just they have they they. Or they got to start winning. Yeah, those magic uh, games are, are big. Yeah, they're big games. Very yeah, very big. Are very big. If you're the Knicks, you basically want them to split. Yeah, yeah. that's basically because you, you gain a game on each either way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you want to gain, gain a game on each. Uh, speaking of, I will cede the floor to two of the seven thousand Knicks fans that I have to deal with. <laughs> in my I, look, I I do still think the Knicks. Like I I cannot get over the fact that there is a number as long as 25 to one out there for them to win the Eastern conference. When two teams that are in the play in have shorter odds, <laughs> like the Sixers and the heat have shorter odds than the Knicks and they're <laughs> yeah. in the play in. Like I, I, I don't, I just, I don't get it. Like I understand Randall is out. Randall's hurt. You like you have Ananobi back. Brunson has looked like he could literally be the best player on the floor in so many series. I know that what, Tibbs does is always concerning because he plays these guys playoff minutes and he's like had to do that basically to get them to where they are. And then you're like, well, is there a ceiling? Like, what is the ceiling? But it's like, at least if you're looking at New York right now, you're like, well, you haven't had OG and for the last like two months. And the dude is an all world defender. So you have him, you have Mitchell Robinson. I think it's a little bit different than other years where you'd say like, all right, they've been healthy. They've played their guys max minutes to the max effort. And they're like the th the four seed in the East or the five seed in the East. This year feels very different given the fact that they've had so many injuries and they've, they're actually getting guys back now that you would say are going to be critical parts of a playoff rotation in OG Ananobi in Mitchell Robinson, that like having that, is a significant boost and what they do the two of them are two players that like 
uh, Mitch Robinson in particular does not need the ball to be productive. OG Ananobi doesn't really need the ball to be productive. It's not like you're re-injecting. Honestly, even re-injecting Randall would be, I think, a little bit more difficult just because he's such a high usage player. The offense is still going to revolve around Brunson and, you know, everything else can kind of fall into place. So I just think the number at, like, if you can get a 25 to 1 on the Knicks to win the East is is just way too long given what the the other circumstances are going around the Eastern conference, especially if they like, if they can avoid a Boston spot until, you know, the conference finals, then it kind of gives you a little bit of a hedge opportunity. Um, and it, it's possible that they could go all the way up to the two seed. It's unlikely, but it's possible. Denver nuggets to beat the Milwaukee bucks. Exacta uh, is uh, 16 to one. The Denver nuggets to beat the New York Knicks. Is a hundred to one. Sign me up. <laughs> one hundred times the Nuggets and Knicks have to meet in the finals for you to have um, value on that ticket. Uh, Jim, I'll let you kind of make the the Knicks argument as well. Yeah, I mean, Joe, Joe, unsurprisingly covered it very well. The biggest thing to me to keep an eye on is that Tibbs is doing the Tibbs is Tibbsing hard right now. The the I think Joe brought it up last week on the pod, but having three of the the top seven guys in minutes per game over the last month or so, yeah. they really have been, he's wearing them, he's wearing them down. And and that did, you saw the signs of that last year when they bowed out in the second round, they looked fatigued. Brunson didn't look like himself. And I, I do think that that's the biggest thing with the Randall of the Randall of it all. I said, that's why I said last week, there is just an offensive floor thing that he helps with. I, I do think that that is a good number though. I think at 25 to one, especially if we can see, like I said last week, I want to see Ananobi back and I want to see him stay back and I want to see what the bracket looks like. If they can get into that 2-3 spot, potentially match up with the Bucs, uh, I do think they match up very well with the Bucs. We saw that today. Mm -hmm. uh, the drop coverage, Jalen just loves that drop coverage. Shreds it. Yeah. But, and, and yeah, and then Ananobi being back, if he is fully back, that is such a good weapon to have for any postseason series. I just, I do worry that they've been, you know, running real hard the last, you know, to get to this point and then you know, at what point does that just wear and tear kind of really build down on a, on a team? But at 25 to one, some of that stuff is baked in. So I, I do think they're a team that I'm interested in general. Um, that Nuggets number is actually pretty fun, uh, especially because you're getting the Denver side of it too. You'd be able to get a great hedge if something broke funky and, and the Knicks did get there. Um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty much with Joe and, and liking this number. I just want to wait. At this point, we don't have to wait that long. We can wait two weeks and we get yeah. to see everything and we get to see if Ananobi is still healthy and all that. So I, I want to wait a little bit longer. I don't think the number is going to shrink, especially with Embiid back now. There's enough big big names and big teams in the East that, that I'm fine with it. Yeah, and like, look, why buy it now when you might wind up with like, <laughs> like what if it, the, the Knicks are like, hooray, we got the two and we get Joel yeah. and Embiid. Exactly. Or... Like, hooray, we're the two seed, and here here comes Jimmy Butler. Fun fact, though. By the yeah. way, I still very much think that if, if we get Bulls heat, the Bulls are live to take out the heat. And I, I think that that's looking likely, and I, I don't hate a we, – we've made this bet, I feel like, 400 times this year, a heat to miss the playoffs. <laughs> I am I'm still a, a doubting Thomas on this heat team, and I, have, I think the Bulls could take him out. I have heat to miss the playoffs and heat to win the title. So. <laughs> yeah, I think that You're sums tied. up the heat really You're well. Tied. I'm good. You're so um. I was on, like I said, I was on bet. You better, you bet. And they, they, Nick Costa is a Knicks fan. He's like, I just don't think this is going to happen. Like they're very worried about the Randall and his injury. Yeah, I trying to like calm them down. And it's tough because I'm like, I don't want to insult Julius Randall. I really don't. Like he's a two time All NBA guy. And I really need to be clear on this. A lot of guys make All Star team that you're never going to hear about again. All NBA is a big deal. Yeah. Like there's a little bit of protection on those guys. You're going to have really good years and to do it twice is tough as hell. Julius is a really good player. I don't think this construction needs him. Like it is very simple. It's high pick and roll with Jalen Brunson and either Isaiah Hartenstein or Mitchell Robinson with Josh Hart, DDV, and it's particularly OG and spacing the floor. That is a simple construct that will get you very far versus the teams that they're facing. Well, and when Carl Anthony Towns went out from Minnesota, I said the same thing. I was worried about their, you know, offensive floor. They've looked just as good. So it definitely is possible. I just do think playoff basketball is a little bit different. Yes, for sure. And then here's it. Well, it depends. Are you facing Doc Rivers or not? Because he's not going to adjust. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing here I will say on the in, on the fatigue front, you're not wrong. They definitely ran out of gas, and it's always a concern with Tibbs teams. 
Um, <laughs> if you want, if you've listened to this episode for this long, if you want the best argument for why you should just lay it with Miami or with the Boston Celtics right now, it's this. Everybody else is going to be gassed. Yeah. Because nobody has gotten in that fortunate spot of like, nope, locked up the five seed. Everybody else was too worse. We can't catch the four. It's not even about being at the top. It's like Denver is in this situation. I'm telling you right now, I watch that team every day. They are gassed. Reggie Jackson is sick and was wearing a mask on the sideline. Like, I don't know what they're going to be, shape they're going to be in on Tuesday if that gets around the locker room. Okay. And on, even beyond that, they're just exhausted. That team is exhausted because they keep being like, well, maybe we could take our foot off the pedal. <sighs> OKC lost again. We could get the one seed. We should go plot. Like, it's been close enough for everybody to where there's so much opportunity. You keep pushing. And so everybody's playing hard. And they don't play minutes like Tibbs does. But, like, you're seeing this with the Clippers. You're seeing this with the Cavs. You're seeing this with a lot of teams. That's one of the advantages, I think, of Dallas. Here's the irony. Dallas is lower than they should be in the seedings because they've had so many injuries, and I don't like using injuries as an excuse. Everybody fucking gets hurt. But the difference is, guess what? Dallas is fresher than everybody else because Daniel Gafford didn't play hard basketball for four months of the years <laughs> because he was a Washington wizard. Yeah. So, like, uh, I, my, I say this only to say that the fatigue factor – if you're like, oh, I don't know, the Knicks are going to be really tired. Man, everybody's gassed. Everybody's okay. tired. And it's going to be hard, I think, for everybody. And honestly, I think it's one of the sneaky reasons why OKC was like, eh. Guess we won't get the one or the two. Like, think about, okay, let's assume, I, Shea definitely had a quad injury. He didn't look right. Got hurt. However, let's think about this from a tactical perspective for, for OKC. OKC went on an East Coast road trip, which is inherently going to be a tougher spot to win. And was like, what's the worst case scenario? We get three and we can't play the Lakers. We yeah. can't play them. The Lakers can't get six. And that's over. That's yeah. ship sailed. The Lakers are not going to get the six seed. So the one team that they had to worry about will not be in their side of the bracket. Like they could lose to somebody else, but they were not like the Lakers they don't have to be worried about. And J Dub and Shea have basically gotten a week off, like a week off while everybody's been burning jets. I think that's very interesting to think about. Uh, we didn't get to it, but by the way, my buy low spot for the Pacer, for the Eastern Conference is actually the Indiana Pacers. Ooh. I'm on the other side from Jim. Uh, it's if it's three six Magic Pacers, I'm probably betting Pacers. Ooh. And if the Bucks, yeah. if the Bucks survive a two seven scare from Miami, I'm gonna bet Pacers versus Milwaukee. Wow. So Halbert, wow, you are notably that. higher on them than I am. I'll I'll say that. Yeah. We'll talk it through. Yeah. We'll talk it yeah. through next week. We'll That's a fun it would be really fun if we got a Magic Pacers first round. No yeah, one has ever said that before, but it would be fun yeah. for buckets. It really would be so time fun. Slot. <laughs> yeah, the 1 p.m. NBA TV time slot on a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next week on this show, Buckets is back tomorrow. Buckets live, 11 Eastern. Andrew O'Connor Watts is going to join me. Uh, I have, well, we'll have one more, more of our panelists. We'll do best bets for Tuesday, huge slate, and we'll uh, do all that. Shows throughout the week as normal for your best bets. Uh, but next Sunday night, we're going to do a special Buckets episode live that's going to break down all of the playoff seedings. We're going to react live to what we see from these playoff series and talk it through. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I'll have more information on that later this week. Appreciate you guys being with us. Thanks for joining us. Make sure to download the Action Network app. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, my thanks to Bet MGM, our sponsors, David Payne, our audio producer, Hutton Jackson, the video crew, getting us up on youtube.com slash the Action Network. My thanks to Joe Delera and Jim Turvey for joining me tonight. We'll see you guys again tomorrow night for Buckets Live at 11 Eastern. Till then, let's get buckets.